Hello and welcome to the video. In this project we're going to be looking at wood turning a butterfly vase, or vase if you will. We're going to need three different types of woodworking jigs to make this project work, and a whole lot of wood. Possibly about 11 different varieties of wood I'm using for this project, uh, maybe 12 if you count some differentiation between two different species of pine. But first is to get them all down to the same size and through the planer. This project was inspired by another YouTube creator, Olivia Gomez, if I've pronounced that correctly. Um, did a fantastic project and the links to that is in the top right hand corner and also in the description below. Definitely worth looking at it. I decided to take his concept and then vastly overcomplicate it and I think at the end of the video you'll be able to really tell me whether it was actually worth the effort in the end. Decided to go for the bow ties or the butterflies to see if the geometry itself could really bring this piece alive. Once all cut down to the same block size then it's on to the first woodworking jig where I can shape them into bow ties. And once they're all processed through that, then it's onto the router with a flush cut trimmer bit, and then using the second woodworking jig to make them into butterflies. So it's just taking the extreme corners off each piece. Of course, I could have spent a lot of time trying to chisel in those corners on the project, but with the amount of butterflies that I used in this project, I would have probably gone insane by the end of it. decided to go for a pre-shaped central column where I could just use it as a sacrificial template using some scrap white wood lying about the workshop. It wasn't too important to get it absolutely perfect but getting close to the final geometry would really help Once we've got all the bow ties made, then it's on to the final woodworking jig, and this one hopefully will reproduce the mortise for the bow ties every time. Now I tried it on flat substrates and it worked perfectly for a variety of pieces that I had cut at the same time. However, when it got onto this particular cylinder, for some reason, when you've extended the route a bit beyond about 20, 25 mil, there was just some slight perturbations in some of the mortises, leaving tiny, tiny gaps. Now maybe I'm the only one that's picking up on them, but to me they were just glaringly obvious. So it's a little disappointing in part. I tried to be as liberal as I could with the glue. There was no point doing the base of the mortise, but certainly all around the sides, except for the bow ties that were going up near the top rim of the final vase. So for that it was just to do the other surfaces apart from that top edge and that will become more apparent later on. Then it's just a case of sighting up the bow ties and hammering home. With the first butterfly joint placed it suddenly seemed like a very daunting task. There was a lot of area to cover in order to completely fill it with lots of butterflies. Of course, when using the router to make the mortise shape for the bow tie, we had to do it by layers. I couldn't just do it all in one. So it took about four or five attempts before we got to the right depth. And every so often, after we had inserted a number of the bow ties, it was onto the bandsaw to just cut off the extreme edges, just so that the template for creating the butterfly mortise um, would fit flush against the cylinder. This is the last of the butterfly pieces going in. And question, how many do you think I've used to make this project? Why not pause the video and write in the comments below and then I'll tell you in a couple of minutes time. See if you got it right. 
Once all that has dried up and we're ready to crack on with some lathe work. So onto the lathe and then the first job is to try and take off all the excess corners of each of the butterfly pieces. The next step was to deal with the base and re-establish that tenon and then we can get it into the chuck. The process is to work exclusively on the outside and make sure that we've got the final shape that is sanded, sealed and polished to the final finish and then we can reverse mount it again and then look at the base. decided to create a hollow cylinder to make it easier to work with rather than trying to hollow out over a large distance using a single tool rest and rather stubby tools at times. But I used a custom made steady rest to try and help alleviate some of the anxiety of this thing wobbling around at high speed. The important thing was to finish off the internal surface before cutting in a little ledge for the base piece. So for the grand reveal, I used 161 bow tie pieces and each one took about five to six minutes to route in, to glue up and then to knock in before I could proceed on to the next one. So that took about four days worth of work in order to get all 161 pieces into the column. And it's something I hope never to repeat again. And I'm so glad that I didn't have to chisel in the extreme corners of bow ties. It was probably day two on routing in all those butterflies that it felt like I'd passed the point of diminishing returns, that the final effect wouldn't be as good as I'd hoped it to be. There was just too many minor little gaps that were forming that I then had to try and deal with and fill. Um, and it just seemed as though that the final aesthetics wasn't ever going to be as good as I'd hoped it to be. But why don't you let me know at the end once you're seeing the final images. The important thing is not to lose heart and to stay focused. And I've got that kind of character that will push through. So just going through the sequences and throughout all the surfaces for the wood turning is to make sure that they're sanded, then they're sealed, sanded again, and then polished. To finish. And here we're just looking at the base piece, a nice little slab of mahogany that will be sparingly glued into the recess in the base, hopefully not causing an overspill of glue on the inside, which would then be rather difficult to clean up. Into the final stages of the project and here we come to an area where we will be glad not to have glued in that top surface of the rim bow ties. So it's just a case of putting in a couple of relief cuts and hopefully that sacrificial wood will just fall out. Like pulling a very loose and wobbly tooth. If you're into that kind of thing, if you have kids and they trust you, you get to do it a lot, especially when you cause no pain. Tiny bit of touch up, filing or sanding to do, a little bit of polish and then the whole project is complete. The butterfly vase, not as refined as I hoped, but it's something about the chaotic nature that really lends itself to the final aesthetics of the piece. Let me know what you think. What was your initial reaction to it? Let me know in the comments down below, especially if you've got ideas about what you would have done differently for this piece. Thank you so much for joining me. Please click on like and subscribe and I'd hope you come back and have a look at some other videos that we've got coming up. Take care.